Hey, welcome to the Vibe Church Podcast. I am so glad that you found us. I trust that what God brings into your life today through this word is going to bless you, expand you, and grow you as a result. I pray that God equips you. I pray that God mobilizes you after hearing this word. Enjoy. We're going to open our Bibles today and come around the Word of God. And we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 16. And you're going to go to verse 24 with me. And you're going to stay standing while we just read this first part of the passage. And it says, Then Jesus told His disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come with His angels in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay each person according to what He has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. You know, for those of us who were here last week, and if you weren't, I wanna encourage you to get the podcast. My husband preached a really powerful word about carrying your cross. And you know, so often in this life, we're taught to save ourselves, to self-protect, to look after what's mine. But He taught us in that message that life is about a big spend. To be sold out for Jesus means that I spend my life, that I pour it out, that I lay it down so that Christ can use me. And today, I'm just gonna continue in the series in verse 25. And it says, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. And I've entitled my message today, Let's All Be Losers. Nudge the person next to you and say, let's all be losers. That's right, I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but it'll all make sense by the time that I'm done. But I wanna prepare you for the Word today because The Word of God is transformative. I don't know if you know that the Bible is living and breathing. It's it's powerful. Those words, when they are preached, they get on the inside of you and they do something on the inside of you that means that you can't leave this place the same. And my husband and I are very convicted that this year at Vive Church, we're gonna preach short and minister long. So I'm gonna open the altar at the end of this message and I wanna prepare you for it. Because I'm not just preaching to your spouse, I'm not just preaching to your children, I'm not just preaching to the person who you hope will hear this. This is a message for you today. And so many times we come in here and we sit under the Word and we're like, well, what has she got for me today? How's she gonna move me? That's not my job. It's not my job to move you. It's not my job to have the perfect tone. It's not my job to do any of that. I just have to deliver the Word of God. It's your job to steward your heart. And you will 1000% walk out of this place, not the same person transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit, if you will do what I'm about to ask you to do. And that is give God control. In these next few moments as I'm preaching, give Him your heart. Give Him all of it. Lay it out before Him and say, I give you permission to speak to me, God. I give you permission to say what nobody else would dare to say to me. I give you permission to whisper in my ear the things that are weighing me down that I need to let go so that I can move into all that You have for me. And so I'm gonna pray that the Holy Spirit would help you do that today. And so Father, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, will You do what only You can do? You transform hearts. So we lay our hearts bare before You today. We lay every burden, every worry, every fear, everything that entangles itself up. Everything that we walked in here confused by, foggy by, not able to think correctly by. Lord God, we thank You that You are able to bring clarity in the next few moments as I bring this message and this Word. By the power of Your Holy Spirit, transform us in Jesus' mighty Name. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Okay, now you can take your seat. 
Now, I just told you earlier that I'm building a team of losers. Who's in? Wow. I thought I'd get crickets. I honestly thought nobody's joining my loser team. Who, who actually likes losing, though? Exactly what I thought. I love winning. I don't know if you know this about me, but maybe that's something that we have in common. I like to win. I'm kind of a quiet, competitive person, though. Like, I'm not going to talk trash to you and, you know, like, like play a big game in your mind and then win. Like, I'm just going to let you do that, and then I'm going to come in stealth-like, and I'm going to wipe the floor with you. That's how I like to roll. And so I took this plan into last year. My husband said, hey, Kira, we need to build some culture with our staff. And what I want you to do is start to do some staffy days, start to do some days where the staff can have fun together, you know, build camaraderie and all of that. And I was like, great. You know what builds culture the best? Uh, a good, healthy competition. And so we began to have these days where we would go out go-karting. Who loves to go-kart? Okay, I'd never done go-karting before. I thought, you know what, I have, I've got this. I psyched myself up so good. I was like, I have been driving twice the amount of time as half these young people on my staff. I, I know how to drive fast down the 101, so look out. But then I found out that beautiful Erin, Erin on our kids' team, who's so sweet and so nice, is like a speed demon. And so she like almost railroaded me, made a speed bump out of me as she whizzed past me. You know, we, we did like an escape room. Has anyone done the escape rooms? Like you have to be smart for that. It's a different muscle that you work out, you know? And, and I, I tried, I think, I, I want to be smarter than what I actually am, but hey. And so I find out I'm in the room with Danielle. Who knows Daniela on our pro production team? Okay, Danielle finished school early because she's a genius. And she solved every puzzle. She's like a wizard of puzzle solving. I was like, great, I'm not winning this one. Then, you know, we did like pickleball tournaments and all of these things. And, and, it's, and it's fun when you see... Other people winning, sure, but it's nicer when you win yourself, okay? I'm just like, I'm happy for you, but I really would like to win. And I think my husband picked up on this because he checked in with me, you know, partway through the year. And he's like, how do you think staffy days are going? I'm like, you know what, babe? I thought that they would be going a lot better than what they are. And he's like, what is the problem? I'm like, well, I'm not winning any of them, you know? And I'm the boss and I need to lead by example and I need to show them what a winner looks like, like you, because all you do is win, 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 no matter what. That's like the theme song to your life. You've won every staffy day that we've had. You can't relate to me. And he just looked at me because the Holy Spirit speaks through him all the time and it's so annoying. And he was like, Kira, when did staffy days become about you winning? It was about the staff winning. So in your losing, we can see that they are actually winning. It was the first moment I had an epiphany of, hey, actually my loss can be a win for somebody else. You see, Jesus talks about this all the time. He talks about it time and time again. He says, I want you to lose your life to follow me. And I've always wondered, like, why would a good God want me to lose to follow Him? Isn't this like the winning squad? Like, aren't we, you know, shouldn't we be winning? And so anyways, Jesus says it over and over again. I'm just gonna read the Bible to you. Matthew chapter 10, verse 39. It says, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you will find it. In Luke chapter 17, verse 33, says, if you cling to your life, you will lose it. And if you let go of your life, or you let your life go, you will save it. He says also in John 12, 25, again, those who love their life in this world will lose it, but those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. It seems to me that according to Jesus, that if you lose your life, you will find it. And in fact, you will not just find something that you had before, but you'll find something better than what you had before. And so I, I try and think very practically around 
ways in life that we could maybe see this, you know, truth of heaven outworked in the earth today. And I started to think about it. And you know what? Vive Worship does a pretty good job of this. Because when you get up here and you see the musicians and you see them losing themselves in the music, you see them suddenly become all that they were created to be, which are worshippers. In losing themselves, we suddenly see that they are found. It's a profound picture to watch. I look at, you know, my run club buddies. Where's my run club buddies at? Okay, the faithful people. Okay, I was talking to Dee Dee just before and she's like been running. She like posts like, you know, like an eight minute mile. It was a slow day, you know. Uh, it's like, that's a slight flex, okay. <laughs> but anyways, but as she's pushing herself beyond her personal limits, she is finding new strength that she'd never known before. She's finding new speeds that she could never reach before, but it requires a losing of yourself. She's like, sometimes I even black out while I'm running past Akira. I'm like, that's taking losing yourself to a whole new level. <laughs> what about the parents? Where's all the parents at? The parents who just lose themselves, pour themselves into their kids, providing for them, making sure that they are the best Uber drivers on the planet and they have no time to themselves anymore because they have just become the taxi driver. But in doing that, discovering who they really are, a phenomenal parent. You know, what about the husband and the wife who are losing themselves in the identity of becoming a unit, of becoming one, and but knowing themselves for the first time? Like there's nothing like marriage to reveal who you really are. Like when God gives you a best friend that's with you all the time and they see everything, all your inadequacies, all your flaws, all your high points, and they can just point them out for you. You know, it's like there's nothing like losing your life in order to find it through these things. And so I think about this and it's not uh, something that is new. We didn't create this. Jesus instilled this before the beginning of time. The original pattern of losing life in order to find it, it actually predates the beginning of time. You see, Jesus himself, he says in John chapter 10, verse 17, he says, the Father, Father God, he loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it back again. No one can take my life from me. You see, the devil didn't steal Jesus's life. He's not his equal. Jesus doesn't have an equal. There's no one like him, no one beside him. Jesus laid his life down. I sacrifice it voluntarily, for I have authority to lay down when uh, to lay it down when I want to, and also to pick it up again. For this is what my Father has commanded. You see, it is a profound. Uh, mind-blowing truth, this whole concept of God sacrificing towards the Son and the Son sacrificing towards the Father. It is the very being and the very essence of God losing yourself to find yourself. And you see, the love of God, we have to understand, is resurrection and is cross and resurrection shaped. You see, there's gonna be a death before there's a resurrection. There's gonna be a losing yourself before there's a finding yourself. And you see, the cross and resurrection manifests the eternal love of God in which Jesus loves His life in order to, loses His life in order to find it, sorry. And so I think that losing your life to find it is a very ancient path. You see, sometimes we start out in life and we wanna follow Jesus and we say, we'll follow you all the days of my life. But the moment I have to die to something, the moment I have to let something go, the moment I have to do something I don't necessarily wanna have to do, we take a detour. And some of you are on a detour already in 2024 and you're circling around some things, trying to find your own way, trying to make your own way. But Jesus is saying, no, no, this is the way. 
There's no life in that path. That detour you're about to take is gonna rob years off of your life. But I am here on assignment today, Vive Church, to make sure that you get back on the path of Jesus, which is one of dying to yourself so that He can give you real life again. And we need to understand that before the world began, before there was any of this that existed, there was the Son, the Son of God, Jesus in heaven, gladly yielding up His life to the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit. You had Father God gladly pouring out His his life, pouring out everything that He had into the Son by the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is in this others-centred spiritual communion that the Father and the Son find themselves by losing themselves. What do I mean by that? I mean that when the Son is the obedient Son and when He submits to the Father, He finds His identity as the obedient son. What do I mean by that? I mean that as the Father pours out His life, entrusts heaven to Jesus, who's gonna come to earth eventually and restore all the blessings that we partake in, that as He gives that to Him and bestows it upon Him, He becomes and stands in His identity as a loving Father. You see, at the same time, we find that the Holy Spirit Um, how He empowers the Father and how He empowers the Son in their sacrificial love for each other. He finds His identity in doing that as the communing Spirit. You see, the Trinity is is a community of persons who find their lives in losing them. And I need you to understand this. And the reason I circled it so many times so that you could just comprehend it in your mind is that this is the love that preceded and produced the universe. A God who said, I wanna create others who can come into this community that we have, this loving community that we have. And so the Father sends the Son filled with the Holy Spirit Spirit into the world, and this is the kind of life that He reveals, a self-giving one. And Jesus gets on the earth and He's like laying down His life for His disciples, and He's laying down His life for you and I, and He's laying down His life at the cross so that He can be the resurrection of life for us, so that He can invite us into this community of persons. Jesus is calling us in. He's saying, I led the way for the Losers Club, but I'm inviting you in to be a loser with me. Lose your life in order to find it. And so as we lose our lives for His sake, which is kind of perplexing, like why does Jesus need me to lose my life for His sake? For everything that He did, for all that He did to be laid hold of, I need to lose my life. And it is in that moment that I find my identity as a child of God that I am brought into this divine, sacred, loving family. You see, in John chapter 15, verse 13, it says that there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. He, and Jesus says, you are my friends if you do what I command. Today, you get to be a friend of Jesus. Today, you get to step into that community of believers. You know, there's a million and one things that will ask you to lose your life in this life. And they will promise you, it's promised to give you life in return. But the truth is none of those things actually pay up. None of those things, they're all empty promises. Careers, they promise you that they will make you somebody. They promise you fulfillment. They promise you success. But at the end of the day, they just take from you. There'll be other things that are vying for your affection, success. Everybody wants to be successful. Everybody wants fame. Everybody wants to be an influencer these days. They're saying, come, give me your life. Lay your life down for me so that I can give you life, but it will be void of life. There are things that like power and money and respect and even the love of another human being that will have you bending over backwards to pour your life out for a human love that doesn't even repay nearly as good as the love of God. 
And Jesus says, I don't need you to go down those paths. You can look for love in all the wrong places. You can look for fulfilment in all the wrong places. But the only true path that you're gonna find it is this path where you die to yourself so that you can be resurrected to new life. It's the path of the cross and resurrection. He says, I want you to lose your life. And then he adds a promise that you'll receive it back with interest. You see, this is not just a losing my life like, oh, I just lost my life. I just lost who I am. No, it's, it's not like that. It's an intentional laying down. He says, I want you to be so intentional about this because nobody was controlling in heaven and saying, you need to do this or that. No, the Trinity laid life down one for another. It was self-sacrificial. Their wills were enacted, but it was a willingly laying down. And so for God's will to be done in your life in 2024, it is going to require you to be willing because that's the true nature of the kingdom. The true nature of the kingdom is not a forced labour camp. You can't say to me, oh, I'm sold out for Jesus, Pastor. But you know, my life is bankrupt and I'm a bit boring now and I have no fun and I'm the most depressed person in Palo Alto. No, no. It's not like I came into the kingdom and now I can't have any fun and I dress in beige and, you know, I'm, I'm like only wear black and white and, you know, life is so boring and I can't party anymore and I can't drink anymore and I can't sleep with whoever I want anymore. That's not what it is to follow Jesus. That's not the kingdom sold out. The kingdom sold out that you and I should have is one of willingly laying our lives down for Jesus. I lay all that stuff down. I lay the drugs down, I lay the alcohol down, I lay the sex down, I lay the addictions down to pick up something that is way better and way more fulfilling that this world cannot offer. It's like not even a fair trade. It's a joy to be sold out for the Lord. I willingly don't go that path. I willingly surrender my life to Christ to be sold out is to willingly sell out of everything this life has to offer so that you can die to yourself and be raised to new life in Him. And so I wanna ask you today, because there's so many things that I know you walked in here with. My husband did a great illustration last week that I'm just gonna bring back a little bit of. But there's some things that you're holding on to that are yours, they don't need to be yours. The things that you're holding on to that you need to lay down on the altar today, that you need to let go of on the altar today. The things that can't enter your 2024, because if they enter your 2024, you're gonna miss the bigness of what God has for your life. This is God's plan for your life bigger, more expansive, greater than you could ever dream, think or imagine. And we can't lay hold of all that God has for us because we've got our hands full with things that we walked in here with that we feel like we can't let go. But I'm here to give you permission today that we are gonna have some ministry and you're gonna be able to lay some things down on the altar here today and leave them before the Lord. They're not gonna follow you into your 2024. They're gonna die at the altar today. You're gonna leave them at the altar today. You see, for some of you, it's like a mindset. It's a a mindset that God wants to break you out of. There's like a worldview or there's a perception or a perspective that you have of yourself that is so limited. It's gonna shrink your growth in the Kingdom. You're never gonna become all that you were created to be if you keep holding on to this thing. You have to leave that thing at the altar. You're gonna have to drop that thing so that you can run after the big plans that God has for your life. You don't need to be falsely humble in the Kingdom. You can have a true humility. You can understand whose you are, so therefore who you are, and you can be more than a conqueror in Jesus' Name. You don't need to frame up 2024. 
24 in fear and limitation and worry and concern. Someone's gonna lay that down today. Some of you need to lay down your past today. Your past has been preventing you from entering your future. You're so hung up on what was, on what they did, on what you did, on what didn't happen, on what could have happened, that you're still living in the past. And every day you wake up and you bring the past into your new day. You know, one of our Vox Gen students are kind of prophetic. They made a sticker, my daughter gave it to me. I stuck it on my laptop immediately. It says, look forward, don't look back. Too many of us are looking back. We're looking in the rear view mirror of our life when we have a big Tesla front screen where you get even more air to, to look up and see the sky and see the expanse of all that God has got for your life. You're gonna have to lay down the past, lay down that past relationship, lay down that thing that keeps pulling you back and stopping you from entering in to all that God has for you. Some of you have got to lay down your mistakes. There's forgiveness in Jesus' Name. Stop crucifying yourself for what Jesus has already crucified on the cross so that you can be set free. Some of you, you're gonna like lay down offense today. Let me tell you, I hate offense. Offense is the main reason people leave the church. It's the main reason they get out of community. Offense. Oh, but they hurt me. Oh, but you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they said to me. God does. Let it go. Let the offense go. Don't let the offense be the thing that stands between you and the amazing call of God in your life and maybe even your salvation because you've walked out on community, you've walked out on church, you've walked out on people because someone offended you. Listen, when you're in community, people are always gonna offend you. You have to be good at getting rid of offence. Oh, Jesus says, whoa, offences will come. Not they might come. No, they're gonna come every day and they're gonna come faster and harder in 2024. So you better just be good at body blocking them and kicking them off and saying, you know what? I'm not gonna have an offendable spirit. I am gonna have a spirit of joy. I'm gonna be happy even if everyone hates me. I feel so liberated right now. Some of you are gonna lay down your excuses. Oh, I'm in a new place and I'm in a new setting. And I don't have many friends. Let me tell you, when I first moved to America, there was that three month bracket. I didn't know hardly anybody. And you only have a present with people, you don't have a past. It was probably one of the loneliest times of my life. My family had forgotten about me. They got on with their life and their routines. And you're still here in this new place. And some of you are in this church and you're around this community, but you haven't locked in yet because you're still thinking about who you were in the last season or who you were at your other church, or who you were in that other setting, and you haven't given yourself permission to let go of what was so that you can come into what God has, because He's got way more for you. Maybe He's gonna use you in ways you've never been used before. There's an anointing on that laying down today. And look, honestly, Sometimes we have to get good at doing a daily surrender of laying down good things for better things. You know, what you've got might be good. Maybe you can read the Word pretty good, but maybe God wants you to do it great. Maybe you can, maybe your marriage is pretty good. Maybe you love each other and you got married and there's intimacy and it's just about you two and it's really cute and you come to church every Sunday together and you sit all in your pew nice and neat. But you don't know the largeness of what your marriage has been instituted for, that your marriage is ministry, that your marriage is there so that you can be a living, breathing model of some person laying down their life for another person, where you outgive each other, where you use your marriage as ministry. Sometimes it looks like my husband preaching in London and me preaching here, but we just decided
decided that our marriage was going to be ministry makes it really easy. There are no temptations because I know I've got way too many people watching. I love my husband way too much. It's a ministry. Some of you need to make your marriage a ministry. It has no purpose. It has no meaning outside of what God intended it for. Some of you need to lay down the plans and the agendas that you have. You've got plans and agendas for your business. You've got plans and agendas for your children. You've got plans and agendas for yourself. And you need to lay them down at the feet of Jesus today because His agendas are way better than any agendas that you could have. I'm not saying don't have a plan for your life, but I am just saying submit them to Him.